we're back with chapter 7.4 and we're talking about the matrix exponential and honestly i think this is okay so <laughs> the computations the algebra just gets more tedious from here on out i would say and this is probably one of the most tedious computations that you guys will have to do uh in all of math 240 aside from some of the differential equation stuff which that stuff gets really bad too but for right now we're talking about matrix exponentials and essentially uh, what is the matrix exponential well it's e to the ta and it gets used a lot in solutions for differential equations so this means absolutely nothing to you guys right now and we're just gonna have to try to find this uh, and I, again I'm not explaining any theory so let's just go plug and chug this and find what the matrix exponential is so let's say I'm given a matrix a and we're just gonna do a two by two uh, to make this video a little shorter than it really needs to, than, than it has to be. So, all right, so let's say I have a two by two and this is my matrix. So how do I find the matrix exponential? So I need to find this guy, all right? This is the question, find this guy. So given A, find E to the TA. And how do I do that? Well. There's a reason why this comes after 7.3 with diagonalization. It's because if the matrix A is diagonalizable, this actually ain't so bad. And so for now, you just have to pray that your matrix is diagonalizable. And what we're going to do then is the theme of essentially this chapter seven is to find your eigenvalues in eigenvectors. But just do that always just at the beginning you're given a matrix just find the eigenvalues and eigenvectors so let's do this uh, so to find the eigenvalues I get minus 5 minus lambda minus 12 2 5 minus lambda right got to take the determinant of this guy this is a minus lambda i right here a minus lambda i and what do I get I get then uh, minus 5 minus lambda 5 minus lambda plus 24 and so this becomes, I think this becomes, what, lambda squared minus one? And all right, so I get lambda squared minus one is equal to zero, so lambda is equal to plus or minus one. Cool. And so now here are my eigenvalues, and now I need to find my eigenvectors. So for lambda equals one, I have negative six, negative 12, two, four times x, y is equal to zero, zero. And from eyeballing this, we can see that uh, this is two negative one is going to be an eigenvector. And let's make it negative two, one, why not? And for n lambda equals uh, two or negative one, uh, I see that uh, this becomes negative four, negative 12, two, six, uh, x, y is equal to zero, zero. And now, uh, let's make this negative 3, 1 as my eigenvector. So here's V1, here's V2. And since I have a 2 by 2 matrix, I only need to find two eigenvectors. Um, and so these two eigenvectors then form an eigenbasis for the eigenspace of this 2 by 2 matrix A, negative 5, negative 12, 2, 5. Okay, and so what do we do? Well, the idea is this, E to the TA is equal to some ridiculous summation formula based on the uh, power series of E, which the, don't get me wrong, that actually becomes very useful. Um, and there are certain situations, I think I'll cover them, where we are, we're actually gonna need this. It's the A plus, I, it's the I plus AT plus AT squared over two factorial. Uh, it's that one, it's in your book. Um, it's the one that when the professor puts on the board, you guys are like, what the hell is this? Um, <laughs> that one doesn't get used as much. Um, but in general, if you have an eigenbasis, right? So we have V1 and we have V2 um, for a two by two matrix again, so we only need two, uh, then E to the TA can be written as S, E to the DT, S inverse. And so this looks familiar, right? Because just earlier in the other video, we did S, D, S inverse. Well, that's actually the next step. Um, to find this guy, we actually need to find S, D, S inverse, and we have all the tools to do it. So in step three, uh, we just 
create S D S inverse. So here's S, here's D, uh, here's S inverse. And so, well, what is S? Well, S is going to be our eigenvectors, right? So let's say negative uh, two, one goes first, which means then for my D matrix, uh, this has to be positive one, since that's the eigenvalue that it corresponds with two. And then I put negative three, one, which means that here this has to be a negative one since negative three one corresponds to uh, the negative one eigenvalue, right? So, okay, so there's SDS inverse. Uh, to find S inverse, uh, it's actually, you can actually just do the determinant trick. It actually works out very well. And it's just one, negative two, negative one, and positive three. Okay, so here's SDS inverse. And now what the heck is e to the dt? Well, the idea is this, e to the dt uh, is equal to e to the lambda 1t, e to the lambda 2t, all right? It's very simple. So you just take e and you raise it to whatever power uh, is in your middle matrix. So then step four, we see that e to the at is equal to s, negative 2, 1, negative 3, 1, e to the dt, which is e to the t, e to the negative t, right? Because d was 1, 0, 0, negative 1. And so we get e to the 1t and e to the negative 1t, right? Lambda 1, lambda 2, all right? And zeros everywhere else. And then we get s inverse, uh, which again is 1, 3, negative 1, negative 2. And now here comes the part that's the big pain in the ass. Uh, you, you, okay, so for some matrix matrices, uh, on some exams, you don't have to multiply this out. Uh, for two by twos, almost universally, you're going you're gonna to have to multiply all these out. And so if we multiply uh, this out, what do we get? Uh, we get uh, negative 2e to the t, uh, negative 3 e to the minus t, e to the t, e to the negative t, times 1, 3, negative 1, negative 2. So that was multiplying the first two matrices together and then multiplying the multiplying that result by uh, S inverse. We're going to get negative 2 e to the t plus 3 e to the negative t, um, and then negative 6 e to the t plus 6 e to the negative t, e to the t minus e to the negative t, and then 3e to the t minus 2e to the negative t. And there we go. We have our matrix exponential. This is it right here. And again, the only reason why we can do this is because we have this basis um, of eigenvectors uh, that we put in S. And so what happens when we don't have the right number of eigenvectors, right? Um, or we're missing an eigenvector in our basis because of a duplicated eigenvalue. Well, I'm gonna cover that in the next video. But as a final wrap up here, again, this is for a two by two matrix, so it's a little bit easier. The exact same idea applies for n by n uh, dimension matrices. So for three by three matrices, four by four matrices, the exact same idea applies. Find your eigenvalues and eigenvectors, uh, diagonalize your matrix if you can, and then just raise the middle matrix D uh, to some power, right? So you just raise it e to the dt, and you get this result right here, and you just plug in your eigenvalues uh, into the diagonal matrix raised by t. And so for three by three, is that exact same thing. We'll see by we'll see a three by three in the next video when we deal with uh, a matrix that doesn't behave nicely because there's no basis of eigenvectors. And I'll see you in that video.